Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining me today for another episode of Stamping with Jeannie. Um, I'm going back to the basics this month. Uh, this is my third installment. Today's installment is all about paper. And I hope you are joining me and learning something new. I try to have little tips for you every week, even if you've been stamping for a while. So I thank you for joining me. It's been a busy week in the studio. Um, I had my Feels Like Frost class on Saturday afternoon, and we made 12 cards using the Feels Like Frost paper. I used every single pattern and made a card with that. And if you're going to the Stamp Out Breast Cancer event on Saturday, hi Kathy. If you're going to the Stamp Out Breast Cancer event on Saturday, I will have a display there and you'll get to see all the cards. I'm going to show you a couple today because I'm going to show you how I use them um, when I'm talking about paper. So there is so much to talk about. I'm, I'm going to talk for a second, but I am going to flip down pretty quickly. But I do want to make sure that you saw on my page the event for the Stamp Out Breast Cancer. Um, that is a stamping event this Saturday in Drake, Massachusetts. If you live nearby, please come. It's a great time. We have music, we have raffles, we have speakers, and these speakers are usually survivors um, or supporters if we don't have survivors that are able to speak or haven't spoken before. Um, it's The raffles are fabulous. They're stamping raffles. They're non-stamping raffles. You know, people donate baby blankets and they donate stamp kits and they donate Keurigs and, and Starbucks coupons and you name it. Hi, Nikki. You must be off from school today. Glad you could join me. But anyway, this really is just back to the basics. And if you're a demonstrator, this is something you can pass on to your uh, students, your class people. And if you are new to stamping, you've never stamped before, this is a great place to start. So the last two weeks I've been talking about ink. I talked about the regular classic ink and how to open those pads. So go back and watch it if you haven't yet and you're having trouble. Last week I talked about the specialty ink. Oh, lunch already? Oh yeah, 11 o'clock, okay. Well, enjoy this while you're eating your lunch. Um, anyway, I last week talked about the specialty inks and there were five of them. There was the Stazon, the Versamark, the Memento, the Delicata inks, and I am loving those Delicata inks. And the, for the fifth thing that I included last week, I talked about the spots because they are kind of a specialty thing. You can only buy them uninked unless you subscribe to Paper Pumpkin and then you get a little one, a new one every month. And they don't repeat for a year. So that's always something if you wanna have just a little bit, if you wanna just start to stamping. But today's um, thing, I'm going to get back to the basics again and we're gonna talk about paper. So let me flip down. If you're enjoying this video, please like it. Um, that gets me, gives me love and it makes me happy. Um, if you don't like it, give me an angry face, that's fine. But I'm hoping you're gonna learn something and I'm gonna flip you down now, hopefully. Okay, here we go. So down here, oh, before I forget, um, the host code is here for October. If you need a demonstrator and haven't placed an order or want to place an order, especially for today's 24-hour uh, stamp sale, I've got a host code. You do that, I send you something nice. So anyway, here we go. We're going to flip down and I'm going to start talking about paper. Okay, we are already talking about paper. Um, to start with, we have um, our Whisper White paper. Now, Whisper White comes in two thicknesses, and I really, really love the regular Whisper White paper. It's not as thick as the thick Whisper White, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, but it has such a smooth finish, and it's so bright white, it's just lovely for stamping. When you stamp on it, because it has a little bit of a finish, you wanna hold your stamp down to the paper just a little bit longer, so it gives it time to absorb. Count to three, like 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. I have a friend that says, say, Michelle is great three times. You can say Michelle is great if that works, but I'd rather have you say Jeannie is great. Anyway, only kidding, that's not my style. But anyway, it is a great tip to know that you wanna hold it down and let the ink absorb into the paper. So we have our regular Whisper White cardstock 
and we have our thick whisper white. And I'm just thinking now, I wanted to put a little bit more light on the subject here. There we go. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. But anyway, it is, they're both very white. I do like the finish on the thin whisper, the thinner whisper white better. You get 40 sheets in a package, so you definitely get your money's worth. This one, you get 24 sheets in a package. I'm gonna tell you a little bit with the Whisper White. Actually, let me put this off to the side for a second. Um, when you're, you have your card stock, the Whisper White, the thick Whisper White is not great for, I, I use the thinner Whisper White for stamping, but it's not a great base. So this is an old, old stamp set. I pulled it out of my card rack. Um, and it's thin Whisper White. You can see how thin it is. This is this isn't the thin Whisper White. It's just the basic Whisper White, the one that's 40 sheets in a cardstock. So anyway, that's that. Then you've got so it it's it stands up okay, but it's a little bit. It's just not as firm. I forgot to put my phone on Do Not Disturb, so hopefully that's going to be okay. Anyway, this one is a thicker Whisper White, and it stands up better. You can see that. This was one of my cards that I made this week in our Feels Like Frost class. I actually can get two of these um, cards out of one sheet of the uh, DSP. It's six by six DSP, it's lovely. And I cut this in half at three, and then I just did a border. I'm gonna talk about borders and everything in a minute. But anyway, this is the Thick Whisper White. So if you're going to do a base Use the Thick Whisper White. If you don't have Thick Whisper White, just put a second layer on the inside of your regular Whisper White. So now let me talk a little bit about um, using the paper trimmer. So you've got your paper. Let me move this out of the way for a second. You've got your paper trimmer. This is actually the new paper trimmer. Um, and it's lovely. It cuts really, really well. Um, there are a few differences, and I found one of the differences is that these blades pop out really easily. Not that you're going to lose them, you won't lose them, especially because this locks every time you use it. But if you, for instance, got the paper trimmer one way and you're not used to where the score blade is, I like my score blade at the top. It popped right out. I don't know if you saw that, but I'm just pressing a little bit with my finger underneath. And these are flexible, these blades are flexible. Hopefully you can see that, and it pops right out. I prefer mine at the top, especially because I've already made a project this morning, and rather than scoring, I cut. So, you've got your paper trimmer, you've got your scoring blade, which is the light blade, and think of it as a light touch. You're not gonna go all the way through your paper, as opposed to the dark, or heavy, you're gonna go through your paper and you're gonna cut it, if that helps. Otherwise, take a Sharpie and write, score, and cut on your blades, whatever it takes to work. But they, they are interchangeable if you have one way or another to work them. So, so I've got my score blade and I've got my cutting blade. Um, let me talk about the paper for a second before I actually cut or score. Um, your usual paper, comes in eight and a half by 11. Um, if it's DSP, it comes larger, but your standard card is going to be four and a quarter by five and a half. Let's check out another beautiful card that I made this week. Um, this I made this one as well. Um, this used another pattern of the uh, Feels Like Frost DSP, and I just cut out a frame sp from Sparkle Paper and then I just embossed right on the DSP. I took my uh, Early Espresso ink and clear embossing powder and I embossed and there's my card. But what I wanted to show you is, the, this card is four and a quarter by five and a half. Most cards are. They're four and a quarter by five and a half. Now there's two ways that you can get four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'll show you two cards that are different. Um, maybe just one card. Okay, so this card happens to be scored. Sorry, I have my notes for my tutorial here. Um, this card is cut at five and a half. 
Now what I do is I usually score my paper all at the same time. I score, if I'm going to cut this at five and a half, I know that I'm going to score this at four and a quarter. So I will score my paper at four and a quarter, the entire sheet in one pass, and then I'll cut it in half. And then I've got two card bases ready to go. Mostly because when I prep, I do more than one card. But even still, to have another one ready to go in the drawer is not a bad thing. So you can do it that you're scoring at four and a quarter and you're cutting at five and a half. And there you're going to, and this is a, out of an eight, on the eight and a half side you're scoring and on the 11 inch side you're cutting. So that's that, you could do it that way. Well, there's another way of doing it too. The other way is, and this is another one of my cards from this weekend, you can also do it this way. And it got too close to my glue, so I've gotta, don't look at that. But see, this one, I scored it at five and a half, and I cut it at four and a quarter. Now, this way, if I'm going to wrap ribbon around the card, this way I usually like to score it at, in half and then cut it on the four and a quarter line. This way, if I'm doing ribbon that way, I score it that way. Generally, my cards are like this, but for um, photographing, I also like to have it because they stand up straight like that. So, what you need to know is that you have to decide what orientation you want your card. Now, if your card is going to stand like this, I don't like mine to open sideways, unless it's supposed to. Here's another card. Beautiful, huh? I love this one. So this is a special fold, but you don't have to worry about that. My point is, if it's like this, I don't necessarily like my cards to sit like that. I usually like them to sit like that. But it's all personal preference. So what you have to decide is what you want your card orientation to be, horizontal or vertical, and then you can decide where you're going to score it. So you're either scoring at four and a quarter or you're scoring at five and a half. And I hope I didn't make that too complicated. But anyway, so with my paper cutter, let's say I am going to do this so that it's going to be the regular card orientation. And yes, this is a card we made in our class last night. Love it, this is Beautiful Friendship, on sale today for the 24 hour stamp sale. Come Together, um, Daisy Lane, I'm not sure if that's on the list. And then that's a that leaf is from Painted Harvest, and this is from Better Together. I used a whole bunch of stamp sets, but the, the point is I can use a whole bunch of stamp sets if I've got them, but I use them all together. This was Anne's birthday card, but we made it again in class last night, so. If you place an order today using the host code, I will send you the tutorial for that. Actually, for all the cards we made last night. But anyway, so I'm gonna have your general stand-up card like that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to score it at four and a quarter. And I have to say, usually when I score, I honestly use my score, uh, my score tool rather than this. But you can, and it works really well, you can see the score line right at the four and a quarter, and I'm gonna cut at five and a half. So I'm using my darker blade and I'm cutting. So now I've got my two card bases ready to go. So you've got your cards and you've got your regular base here. Um, this card is um, the, like I said, here I'm gonna use my bone folder to make it a nice crisp edge. This is four and a quarter by five and a half. So the next thing I'm going to do is do a layer that is a quarter inch less here. This is generally how I start my cards. My card layer, my mat, my next mat is going to be like this one. It's four and a quarter by five and a half card base. This, if you can see it, is four by five and a quarter. So it's one quarter inch less on the side, vertically and horizontally. So you take a quarter inch and that leaves you an eighth of an inch around all four sides. When you're gluing it down, you just, if you have cut it so that it's exactly a quarter inch off of both sides, it'll be even on your paper. 
and you can go from there, but I'm just saying, you can, as long as your top and two sides are even, your bottom is gonna be even, as long as you've done the math right. So four and a quarter by five and a half is your card base. The next layer is four by five and a quarter, always. And it doesn't matter, always if that's what you choose, I should say. It doesn't matter if your card is this way, if it's this way, if it opens up, or if it opens sideways, your next layer with a quarter inch off is four by five and a quarter. And then you can go from there and make your next, your other layers. So I wanted to show you, so this card right here, I did my four by five and a quarter layer. My next layer, I took off about half an inch, I think. So this, I generally do, yeah, my DSP here is three by four and a quarter. So the next, the layer underneath it, if that's three by four and a quarter, that's going to be three and a quarter by four and a half. So if you do to one side, you do to the other so that it's even on all sides. You can subtract as much as you want. You can um, start, instead of doing um, a quarter inch, you could do even more than that. And you could take off, say, half an inch, and then that's going to be a, a bigger border. Half an inch off of four and a quarter by five and a half would be three and a quarter by four and a half. And then just do your layers underneath that. You can be as simple or as complicated as you want to be. If you take, instead of a quarter inch off, and you take an eighth of an inch, that leaves a really, really fine margin. And let me see if I have a card here like that. I don't think I do. The problem with having an eighth of an inch off of each side that leaves a sixteenth of an inch around your your image or what or your focal point, and if you haven't cut that straight, you know it's really hard, it's really easy to tell that. So anyway, so these are some of my cards that I wanted to talk to you about. So you've got your card stock. So I've got the thick white and the regular white, and I've got my colored card stock. Now this card stock is a gen is this um, a certain width. It's a, a a certain weight card stock weight. Um, sometimes people abbreviate it C slash S. Usually when I'm writing my t tutorials, I would say card stock parentheses C slash S. Mostly because my Microsoft Word always wants to say yardstick instead of card stock, and it auto corrects. Um, but anyway, so you've got your card stock. Then the next thing you have is your DSP. DSP is short for designer series paper. And we've been talking about that for quite a while, but there is there are two kinds of um, designer paper. There is regular designer paper and there is specialty designer paper. Now I've done my little, um, my uh, samplers so I can see my patterns and everything. And for my team, you can get them on the website. Um, but anyway, the regular DSP or designer series paper doesn't have any special effects to it. So this come together, although it's beautiful, it is not specialty. So the price reflects that of course. But here we have brightly gleaming specialty designer series paper. And if you can see it, it has the, the copper foil accents and that makes it more expensive and the price reflects that. So it could be that. There are There is another reason why it could be specialty though besides the foil accents or um, maybe glitter accents or whatever like in the Let It Snow paper. The other reason it could be specialty is like this, the pressed petals specialty paper. I think there's four sheets of each because it's much thinner. So it's much thinner and easier to fold. You're not probably, you know what this, this paper is beautiful for is for those little tea bag envelopes, you know, something nice and thin. Um, so this is thin, but it could also be thick. I don't know if you remember the Share What You Love paper from last year that was thick and that made that specialty paper. So we've talked about cardstock and we've talked about DSP. I'm not gonna get into the foil or anything. I'm not going to get into the glimmer paper. Last week I talked for almost an hour and this week I want to get to our card projects. So 
Before I get into that, I have to show you this adorable uh, little gift. I got this from Susan last night at class. And I have to tell you, Susan, I already stole the Kit Kat out of here and used it for my project that I'm gonna show you guys today. But thank you so much for this. I just love that she is using her stamps. The owl punch is from years ago, but she's still using it. I love that you guys use it. You don't have to use Stampin' Up, I just want you to stamp. I want you to love it. So anyway, so I took the big Kit Kat out of here. And the first thing I'm going to show you um, is this project um, before I lose it and be, so that I can get it out of the way. This is a, just a little DSP, a little gift project, a little 3D thing. And it's using the Monster Bash paper. It's actually an 11 inch sheet of paper, uh, DSP, um, and it's three inches wide. So that means you could get four out of every um, sheet of the DSP in the package because three, you know, three times four is 12. So what I did was I scored it at two and a half, I believe two and a half and seven inches, and it's 11 inches long. So did I do that right? Yep, two and a half and seven inches. So it's three inches wide, 11 inches long, you score it at two inches, and you score it at seven and a half inches. That reminds me, I wanted to tell you once more before I get, we talked about scoring. What I didn't tell you is when you score, you're actually leaving, let me show you this real quick, and then I'll get to that once more real quick. When you score, you're leaving an indentation. Now that indentation, is actually the outside of your paper. When you are actually, when you're folding your paper, I want you to think, remember when you were a little kid, you played monkey in the middle? Think monkey in the middle. Then you think mountain in the middle. This is just what I've taught people and this is how I remember it. So you've got mountain in the middle, you've got your raised, your bump. If you see that, you see the bump, that's your mountain. That They call that a mountain fold. Um, the indentation this side, they call that a valley fold. That's useful for knowing when you're doing specialty fancy fold cards. Right now, just know that you need to have this in the middle. So that mountain is in the middle and you fold it. And then what you would want to do is take your bone folder and press that down nicely. Okay, so now that I've talked about that, because I almost forgot that it's on my my uh, outline over there, but I kind of skipped around. So I've got my large Kit Kat from Susan that I stole out of the bag just for this project because I wanted to show you something easy, something that a beginner could do. So I've scored it at two inches, two and a half inches and seven inches. And I'm going to wrap my big Kit Kat around this. If you have a longer candy bar, just measure it. Um, give yourself a little bit of leeway for the thickness and wrap it around. If it's a long, thin one, obviously you'd have uh, use less width on your designer paper. Okay, so I've got this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a belly band out of this. And a belly band is basically like a, it's like a belt. It's gonna go around here and I'm gonna show you what I did. When I cut my cardstock, I always have scraps and this one just happens to be an inch long, uh, an inch wide, and I cut it down. I have to say, I took my scissors and I cut it down to about what I needed here. But I save my scraps. Sometimes, you know, when I have the four by five and a quarter inch white, the Whisper White, which I always use, by the way, to, um, it always goes on the insides of my colored cardstock so that you have something nice to stamp on and a nice place to write. It's really hard to read the writing on a real red card base. So anyway, so I have my Whisper White card bases or my vanilla if it goes better with the DSP or designer series paper. And those little trimmed pieces I save for my sentiments or for something like this. And this is the belly band. So it's about seven inches long, give or take. You can use your own scraps and uh, figure it out. But all you're gonna do is loosely wrap it around because you wanna be able to slide it off without wrecking your treat because you want them to see this and save it. This is a cute little um, tag that I made to go on here. It says, sorry, I keep going out of the frame, I think. 
it says happy Halloween and what I wanted to say to you about this is that this is from the stamp set to every season if you're new to stamping what I would do is get a pack of whisper white cardstock pick a um, card variety pack of um, whatever color you like for um, colored cardstock. You can get two sheets of every color in the different families if you want. But anyway, this is a great beginner stamp set. It just has little, little items. It has a great little uh, sweet sentiment that you can either put inside or on the bottom of your thing. Um, it has some matching punches, which I used. I used the little bat punch, which is right here. So you've got the heart, the snowflake, the leaf, and the bat. Um, and I stamped my sentiment on some pumpkin pie, and this is the two inch round punch. So really easy to do something. And then the starburst punch. So you don't have to have the big shot to do any stamping or anything. If you want it to look fun and layered or whatever, you can do it with punches. And my next project, I'm gonna show you something else with punches too, a card with that. But anyway, what I did was the black foil, which I honestly thought was retired, but it's not. You've got your black foil. I cut, I punched out a starburst circle. Then the two inch pumpkin pie punch, after I stamped the bat and the happy Halloween, I punched that out with a two inch round punch. And then I just punched out more black foil, um, the bat, and I popped it up with a little dimensional. Now, I don't have to do that. If I wanted to um, do some stamping and you didn't want to buy everything, you could also do it with just the little white note cards. It comes with envelopes. It comes with your card bases already scored. Um, and th there's 20 of them in here. So if you're just starting, buy a pack of the note cards, buy this to every season stamp set, so what I'm going to do, I overlap this. Hopefully you can see that it's overlapped a little bit. I put my dimensionals on each side here. And then what's gonna hold it together is me. I'm just going to do it so that one of the dimensionals is on one and one is on the other. And hopefully it's pretty straight, not too bad. And there you go. And then I can slide that off if I want to, but it holds it in place. So Susan, thank you for the Kit Kat, which inspired me for this little treat holder for you guys today. So isn't that cute? Okay, so that's the first project. The other project I wanted to do, let me get my cards out of the way. Other project I wanted to do for you guys is um, this little snowman, uh, snowman season card. So I've got this here and I've got the punch. I'm gonna show you two ways of doing this card kind of a little stepped up and a basic. So I've got my real red card base. You know what, just to, for some variety, I'm gonna do one, one way. Just showing you that it doesn't matter if it stands up this way or this way. Okay, I've got my Whisper White cardstock. So this is four and a quarter by five and a half. I cut my Whisper White cardstock. I actually need another one for inside, which is the same size, but this is four by five and a quarter. This one is plain, and all I'm going to do is attach this, and I have to say I always use glues. I really don't use snail, but you don't need a ton of snail unless you live in an area where the weather changes, the humidity, it gets dry, it gets um, humid then your cards might come unstuck, which is why I use the glue or leftover fast fuse. But anyway, I've got my, this is my layer. So see how I did it so that it's even on these three sides automatically just about makes it even here. Good enough. Okay. Well, this one I've already embossed. So this is also four by five and a quarter, but I embossed it. So let me put that one. I'm showing you a basic card and a stepped up card. So this is four by five and a quarter Whisper White layered on my card base. And hopefully by now you've got the measurements figured out because I have said it several times. Okay, now this one, if you don't have any 
the big shot but want to do this, look at what I'm going to do. I cut this, I think it's two and a quarter by three and a half, isn't it? Two and a quarter by three and a half, yes. So this is the specialty um, DSP, the Let It Snow DSP. And I am just going to layer that on this, like I said, this mat, when you're layering, it's a quarter inch larger. So this is two and a quarter by three and a half. That makes this two and a half by three and three quarters. And what I'm gonna do is just attach that right here. And what I'm going to do when I finish this, I actually am going to put this up a little bit because I don't have this embossed. I'm actually gonna stamp the Merry Christmas from, uh, or maybe even the Let It Snow from this one right in the bottom corner here. Maybe we'll do that, okay. What I will do, okay, so this one though, I use my Big Shot with my layering ovals, my scallop, and my circles. I've already stamped my snowman. So let me attach him. I'm just going to attach him here. I may actually cut this oval a little bit smaller because sometimes when I'm doing it like this, I like it more of a frame. I like it a little closer. So this one, even though it's, I may do a smaller oval, but anyway, you see what I'm doing. So I've stamped my snowman. Here, I'm going to stamp my snowman. And these are both gonna be about the same, but one is gonna be stepped up because it has the embossing, <coughs> excuse me, and it has my um, big shot work. So let me stamp right here my snowman from Snowman Season, season and I'm gonna use my Snowman Builder Punch. So I've got my Memento ink because I'm gonna color it with blends. I'm gonna stamp that, I'm gonna hold it down, like I said, count to about three, and it usually does a really good job of stamping. There you go. So I've got that, and then what I'm going to do is punch it out. And I have to show you a little trick. Because this is a little scrap and I keep all of my scraps, I use the edge of a post-it note. This is the sticky part of a post-it note. I just attach that right there. I can use it over and over again because I'm not punching the post-it note. What I'm going to do is slide this in and I'm gonna punch my snowman. You could stamp it right on a whisper white piece of paper if you want, but I love this punch. Okay, so I've got my snowman. What I need to do next is stamp my hat and I knew from doing it the last time that what I want to do is make sure, what I do is I look at the punch and I say, oh, to make that the easiest to punch out, I probably want to have my hat facing in that direction. So here, let me just turn this over. I'm going to have my hats in the same direction as it's easiest to punch without losing all that paper. So now I don't need the uh, post-it note. You can see I just kind of stamped that. If I was doing several of these, I'd have a template that I made and I'd put it on my Stamparatus. Um, I'd punch a piece of white paper um, with the whole punch and then I'd kind of build the snowman from there. But anyway, I'm not doing that. And someplace around here, I have a piece of early espresso cardstock for my for my arms, because my arms are, they have to be brown. Okay, so we got that. What I'm gonna do is just color the snowman really quick and then make it look just like the other one. So of course you've gotta have a pumpkin pie nose. And then I don't know about you, but all of my elves, all of my snowmen, all of my animals, they all have pink cheeks. So what I do, I already got ink on me, I use the Flirty Flamingo the light flirty flamingo uh, blend, and I just give them some pink cheeks because they're happy. All my people are happy because they come to my stamp class and they love it. Okay, then I'm going to do my hat. And what I'm gonna do first so that I don't forget is color my band. I colored my band with the Bermuda Bay. I believe it's the light Bermuda Bay. Yep, I've got the Call Me Clover dark call me clover and I'm going to use that for my leaves of my holly. The berries 
I'm going to use Poppy Parade. I believe, yep, Dark Poppy Parade. So that's for my berries. And then I use the dark basic black to color in the rest of my hat. You could also color in your um, snowman buttons if you wanted to. But what I'm going to do instead with my snowman as soon as I finish, I this guy always needs some uh, Wingostella. So I'm going to kind of avoid the memento because I really don't want it to run and I don't want my whole snowman to have a pink face. So just kind of lightly do that. I don't know if you can see the shimmer or not, but it is there. Hopefully you see that shimmer. When it dries, it's even more there. Then what I'm going to do is turn this guy over and I am going to use my dimensionals to hold my arms in place. Who cares what direction they go in, right? I just wanna make sure that they're stuck there. So what I do is I take, you know what? I'm gonna use a little dimensional for each of them. So I'm gonna tack it in place with the dimensional, my arms. And it's up to you if you want to take off the adhesive or not. It's really just a placeholder. Um, this one, the, the top for the head and the body, I put the um, dimensionals and then I take off my adhesive. But this one, it doesn't really matter. Like I said, that middle is really just a placeholder. So here we go. I'm going to put my little guy here. And I'm going to, I should put his hat on yet. So let's put his hat on again with the dimensional. And this is my basic card rather than my stepped up card. And I'm gonna put it here. And all I kind of do is make sure it's even. I wanna have room for my sentiment. So I'm gonna put it even on the sides and I'll put my sentiment down here. Let's see, what do I wanna say? I think I wanna say, let it snow. Let it snow is right here in the middle. Let me use my snowman um, block for this. Um, I'm gonna just stamp let it snow. And if I wanted to, I could even stamp a couple of snowflakes from the stamp set. I might still do that, a couple of little snowflakes. So stay tuned, I'll put it on my um, place later. But see, we've got our two cards. This one, hmm, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. You know what I might do? I have a leftover from last week's Toil Tidings, Twal Tidings, the Cardinal stamp set. I have this leftover that I never put anywhere. So I'm gonna put that right there and you've got two cards and they're both beautiful. One is a little stepped up, one is basic, but you guys can do this. I want you to do this, I want you to have fun. I hope you learned something from me today. It was kind of basic, but the whole point is four and a quarter by five and a half card base. You can figure out your layers. If you want it only a 16th of an inch around, then you cut off, then you're going to subtract an eighth of an inch. More than likely, the general one, you want a quarter inch around, which leaves you an eighth inch on each side. So it'd be four by five and a quarter. If you want to get really fancy, I know that my sister Chrissy, when she makes her cards, she likes three sixteenths of an inch for a border. So if you're going to do that, then you'd subtract three sixteenths of an inch from the top and the side. And then you can do that in the next layer. You do the same thing from the top and the side. You take off three sixteenths of an inch. Just make sure you're consistent. So you'll know if your, if your border is too skimpy on one side and longer on the other, and you just, you just put it in your paper cutter again and you cut it off and you just figure it out. Eventually, these measurements are gonna be old hat. So I'm gonna flip you back. Hi, Susan, I was thanking everybody for your, for your candy. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. I had a wonderful time stamping with you. 
I have no idea what next week is going to be. I'm thinking I could be talking about the refills because there's a couple things we can talk about with them. Or I could be talking about blends or I could be talking about our stamps. There's so much to talk about. But once again, if you need um, a starter set, to every season is a great one. If you get the bundle, you get the four punches, including the little bat punch, and that covers every season. And it's got little sentiments and the little um, things. You can color them in. If you don't wanna make your own cards, you can use your um, note cards that are already cut and scored. But I hope you've learned a lot. And I'll be posting more ideas and measurements on my page for you. And please join my group too so that we can interact and see other ideas. Love you guys and see you next Wednesday. Bye.